Last episode, we were enjoying a really beautiful foggy morning at Crane Island. While that was spectacular, there was a problem. We had to get ourselves over to Rockland in this fog, and the first mile or so is through some narrow and prickly water. All those little star shapes in the chart are rocks, visible at low tide and often covered at high. Once we dodged all those shallow areas and found the FT buoy, we had a relatively clear shot across to the mainland. I'd like to raise the sails again, watching for the whales again, and never have to say. I wish we are leaving in fog. It began to lift, and then it we got casual. It began to lift, and then we got casual and began doing things. Oh, it's lifting, it's burning off. Nope, sock back in. But we have some waypoints and I got a good look at the buoy out here. And then we've got a waypoint to it for a clear shot out to the middle of um, the bite of water between Vinyl Haven and Rockland. Looks like about, well it feels like a hundred yard visibility, I'm sure it's more. But we're creeping along pretty slowly, so nothing's going to sneak up on us too fast. We hope. Found the buoy I'm looking for. Red Nun number two marked Green Island, and though we passed very close to it, we never saw even a glimmer of the island. I hear the bell, but that's good. We hear somebody over there, but we don't see him. There it is. It. You can hear a bell buoy ahead, you can't see it. We thought this was gonna lift. Talk in. There it is, right ahead. Wow. There's no way that's even a hundred yards. All right, FT. Wow, that is some thick fog out here. Woof. That same ferry coming back. Just tooting my own horn, you know. A couple of minutes ago, we ran right between a uh, buoy and a toggle that are connected. Never touched it, but right through the wickets. If you're ever looking for someone, especially in the dark, the tendency is to drive around and try to find them quick, but shut your engine off and listen. They're probably calling to you. We've got our... Uh, Bow watchman there. Yeah, I see it. Two o'clock right there, one o'clock. Almost noon. Hey, I got it. Good. Another one coming out of the fog at 11 o'clock. Yeah. 11 o'clock. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. burning off overhead though it's still pretty thick at water level. Well we found owl's head. And all we have to do is keep one hand on the shore so to speak and follow it right in.
Ah, uh, now that we can see, we're a sailboat. Even if it's just for the last mile. Take it. Yes. Into Rockland. I hope old Captain Jim Sharp is doing well. I want to see him. Oh, a gift from the galley. Neat, nice. But we're in Rockland and we're at the Sail Power and Steam Museum. So we are going to go see Jim Sharp. Interview him properly now that we know who he is. We left here not really quite understanding who he was. Well, you knew it had to happen sooner or later. That's right. I still want this wild and sailorly, but it's just a little less dagwitty, you know? Just Some of office. you are hoping for sooner, admit it. <laughs> this, this rolling makes it extra sporty with it. Yeah, I was hoping it would roll just as I sniffed. <laughs> the sunrise was dewy but sunny, and on the way to see Jim, we found another one of the outward bound boats tied to his dock. We've had this out. Yeah, there's sleeping pads and kind of like kind of sleeping pads like right on top of it to make a makeshift. Really yeah. My God, 13 sleeping yeah. in this. Yeah. What's like the length of the boat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm gonna say 30 feet. feet. Yeah. 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 30. Each person gets a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Has all our clothes. And, and the boat. Look, look at does it. We, we don't, don't have, have our phones. We don't phones for 26 days. <laughs> and look at look at that green little thing. That's the bass seat in the boat. Yeah. That's where you That's used to be. That's the boat. We found Jim outside entertaining a busload of cruise ship tourists and feeding them lobster dinner. You, if you do this at your next cocktail party, you'll be the hit of the town. Luigi, you're embarrassing me now. Get rid of your cameras now. There, Luigi's. Look at that. Look at that. One point. Luigi on point. Look at that. Incredible. What an amazing lobster that is. Isn't he fabulous guy? Look at that. Once we got him to ourselves, we asked him about his amazing sailing history. He was a sketch. I learned from him what these old schooners did with the yaw boat. I, I went three weeks on the Maddie. The new captain on the Mercantile was Avery Marshall, and he was a marvelous man. He could bring that schooner in, and you could put a ping pong ball down between he and the pilings on the dock, and it wouldn't crush him. <laughs> so anyway, I realized that I had to get into this business here somehow. So. I went back down and got into my mellow bar and we went off for the winter season chartering over there. And this Stephen Tabor came up for sale and he accepted an offer from another guy. So I went back on my mellow bar and I, I was over there for six weeks and when I came back, there were three telephone calls and two wires waiting for me on the dock when I get in. The guy had reneged on the purchase of the Stephen Tabor, but he pocketed a big deposit. So he said, Jim, we can talk turkey. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, you know, Cy, I don't have that kind of money. Well, he said, he's a real down Easter. He said, Jim, he says, there ain't time to dicka. He <laughs> says, it's springtime now. Either you're going to buy the boat or you're not. I said, well, I can't afford to pay any more than 12000 for it. He said, sold. <laughs> <laughs> you went, damn it, I should have said nine. <laughs> so I said, all right. Uh, and uh, ran the Stephen Tabor that summer. It's the best thing I ever did in my whole life. I remember one day we sailed her pretty hard. And the next morning I got up and she leaked copiously that night and my suitcase was floating around in my <laughs> see. cabin. My, my sneakers were tacking and jibing between my legs. <laughs> <clears throat> one of my first trips was to Long Cove. Well, that's kind of a narrow entrance for a big boat like Tabor. Well, not really. I know it's the depth of water that counts in Maine. Mm -hmm. Well, you need turning room, right, in case things go wrong. I've gone in there with the adventure. Oh, God, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why he's my hero. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Long COVID, well, the well, adventure. We, 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 Holy we, smokes. We've done, some, done some crazy things. I mean, wow. 
Well, Muriel and I also did a very short stay on a river boat, a, a canal boat in, in Brittany. Yeah. And uh, so I'm excited to hear about yeah. your whole European canal boat experience. Yeah, oh, that was a marvelous thing. One, and you, one you're, of the greatest things you could ever do in your whole life. Yeah, that's why we loved it. It was just a, a week, but... We were there 10 years <clears throat> in a different port every time we left the vessel. Of course, we left the, the cruise to a place and we would leave the boat. And I'd get a guardian and one of the cruisiers, you know, and pay him 40 bucks a month to watch my boat. So you'd go stay for a few months and then fly home, that kind of thing? Yeah, we would be there six weeks in the spring and six weeks in the fall. Mm. So we, we were able to spend three months oh boy. each year in Europe. Now tell me about your new building. You're going to have a boat display. Expensive building. Yes. <laughs> It's like sitting there throwing thousand dollar bills out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rapidly, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so you're kind of you're kind of doing here what you did at Sharps Point in Camden. It seems like a little bit. I mean, developing this little spot and yeah. building it up and. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I wanted to make a museum with the schooner boat in Camden. <clears throat> when I got the boat and I rebuilt her there. And uh, but the problem with the boat was she was too good. When I started to work on her, I realized she's too good. I want to save her rather than put her in the museum. Marion McMillan wanted me to put her in the museum. And I said, no, you put her in cement. You want a cement coffer up on the dock up there. And you put her in cement, and that's the worst thing you can do to a vessel. If you can save her, you know, keep her in the salt water. <laughs> but I rebuilt the boat, and now, of course, she's going back to the Arctic, and she's taking young mariners on training cruises back to the Arctic, the Labrador. I came across like the Bowden. And uh, she would have been a basket case otherwise. So uh, then I always had this idea that I'd like to have a museum. And when I sold the wharf up in Camden, I didn't make my money in the Windjammer business. I made it by selling the wharf in Camden. Well, you did a lot of work, and you really made it into something. It was sort of nothing in you. And when this place came up for sale, of course, and I had all this memorabilia, my wife said, get some of the stuff out of the house. <laughs> so I said, well, maybe this is a good time to have a museum. Our front piece is going to be, <clears throat> we have a 40-foot stern panel wheel, wood-burning boiler uh, uh, steamboat. Wow. Nice. In storage. And uh, with a 10 key calliope on it. We have two, a couple of 12 and a half, so Harrishoff 12 and a half. Mm, yeah. One that belonged to Nelson Rockefeller that he bought from Harrishoff in 1920. Wow. Nat Harrishoff, known as the Wizard of Bristol. He designed gentlemen's sailboats, America's Cup racers, and was generally doing some pretty exciting things with boat design. And of course, we have two French at Sloops. Uh, we have a 28 footer and a 33 footer. Of course, the overall with the bow spritz, they're big boats. You know? Right, sure. But uh, the uh, oldest one is the, the Blackjack. She's the oldest friendship sloop in the country, World War Voice friendship sloop. She's 121 years old. Wow. We rebuilt her from the keel up through. Complete wreck. And she's all new except a couple of pieces that I don't think are original <laughs> but they're old but it's like granddaddy's axe you know four new heads and 14 new handles and it's still granddaddy's axe <laughs> that's right <laughs> Thank you. 
Spanish pie. Sunshine of your eyes, oh me, oh my. Do I feel higher than a kite can fly? Give me loving, baby. I feel. I feel.